Hello, first graders. We are on chapter 24 today. Let's begin by praying a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, chapter 24, page 95. God gives you his life. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. From Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verse 4, very important, Paul speaking about baptism. That's what we're going to talk about today. See the little baby there being baptized there. Right? Adam and Eve sinned. It meant that all the people born after them would have Adam's sin. It is called original sin because it is the first sin. You were born with original sin on your soul. This means that when you were born, there was none of God's life of grace in your soul. You were made for baptism. All right, so that's why we're baptized, because we aren't born with God's grace. Uh, we need to receive that. So the sacrament of baptism washes away the guilt of original sin. When you were baptized, your soul is filled. When you are baptized, your soul is filled with the grace that Jesus won for you. It gives you God's life. That way, you can reach heaven. All right, so it makes you part of God's family. Baptism makes you a child of God. It makes you part of his family. And baptism makes you a member of God's family, which is the church. It's this beautiful baptism. You become part of God's family. Jesus wants all of us to share in his life and become children of God. Jesus said to his apostles, go and baptize all people. The priest is Jesus' helper. That is why priests baptize people. So we have a baptism here you can see. And there, so the baby kind of over the crown of the head, the water. There's a shell, kind of that's typically what's used, symbolic of baptism. We have another baby down here. You can see him wearing his white garment, the baby, the baptismal garment. When the priest baptizes a baby, he pours water on the head and says in the name of the Father, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now the child is, the baby is a child of God. Now the baby's soul is holy and pleasing to God, filled with grace, divine life. Not everyone is baptized as a baby, but most people are. Ask your parents about your own baptism. They can tell you all about when you were baptized. Maybe they even took a picture of your baptism. So sacrament. Did they just show up there? I never even have that. Oh, yeah, just, I guess it wasn't. A uh, sacrament. All right. Well, a sacrament is an outward sign, something we can see with our eyes, our senses, that communicates God's grace to us. All right, it's really Jesus pouring his love from the cross into our souls through the sacrament. And baptism is the first sacrament we receive where we were born uh, new, anew spiritually. We become part of God's family, All right, filled with grace. How is original sin taken away? Original sin is taken away by the sacrament of baptism. I got this. Hold on there. Okay, we got it. Uh, what is baptism? Baptism is the sacrament that makes us followers of Christ, sons of God, and members of his church. What is a sacrament? A sacrament is an outward sign made by Christ to give grace. All right, see, there's are ways through which Jesus pours his grace into us, very powerful ways. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all members of the body, Though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one spirit you were all baptized into one body. 
you know, one body, the church. We become part of one family, uh, the church. All right, move on to the Bible here. It's on page 326. Jesus, a blind man, can see. Jesus and his disciples were walking near the town of Jericho. A big crowd followed them. Just outside the city was a beggar. He had, he had to beg because he was blind and could not get a job. No one would care for him either. He heard the crowd passing by and asked, What's going on? It's Jesus, someone answered. Jesus, thought the man. He had heard about Jesus. He knew that Jesus could help him. He took a deep breath and shouted, Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me. Shh, the people said to him, be quiet. But the man shouted again, even louder. Jesus stopped. Please bring that man to me, he said to the crowd. The people near the blind man looked at him. How about that, they said. Jesus wants to see you. The blind man got up right away and threw down his coat. The people helped him walk to where Jesus was. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus said to him, asked him. Lord, the blind man asked, answered, I want to see. He knew that Jesus could heal him. And Jesus was glad that the man believed. Now you can see, Jesus said. At once the man could see. He was so happy that he followed Jesus down the road. A short story about Zacchaeus. Jesus was visiting the town of Jericho. Crowds of people came to see him. Jesus was surrounded by people. One man in the crowd name, was named Zacchaeus. He wanted to see Jesus, but he was short. He tried to see over the people's heads, but he could not. So he ran down the street where Jesus was headed and climbed a tree. As Jesus came down the street, he saw Zacchaeus up in the tree. Zacchaeus, Jesus cried out, come down from there. I will I must stay with your stay at your house. Zacchaeus got down just as quickly as he could. Hello, hello, he said to Jesus. He was very glad that Jesus had seen him. The people in the crowd mum mumbled and grumbled. Zacchaeus is a rich and cheating tax collector, they said with anger. Why does Jesus want to stay at his house? But Jesus wanted to do what was right. I will give half of what I own to the poor, Zacchaeus said to Jesus. And if I cheated anybody out of anything, I will give him back four times as much. Zacchaeus meant every word. Jesus was very pleased. This man has become a true believer, Jesus said. This is the kind of person I am looking for. And Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house. Mary's present. Jesus had many friends in the town of Bethany. His good friends, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary lived there. One day, Jesus' friends invited people to a special dinner. They wanted to honor Jesus. M Martha served. Lazarus sat at Jesus' table. All of a sudden, the whole room smelled wonderful. What's that smell, everyone wondered? Then they saw. Jesus had opened a jar of perfume. She had poured it on Jesus' feet. Then she wiped his feet with her hair. But Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, thought this was a big waste. What is she doing? Judas asked with anger. That perfume is worth a lot of money. We could have sold it and given the money to the poor. Judas did not really care about helping the poor people. He just wanted more money in Jesus' treasure box so he could steal it. Jesus knew what J Judas was thinking. Leave Mary alone, Jesus said. God wanted this to happen. She is getting me ready to be buried. You will always have, the, have poor people among you but you will not always have me. Jesus said to his disciples, the first Palm Sunday, Jesus said to his disciples, go to the next village. You will find a donkey there. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, say the master needs it. He will bring it, he will bring it back. 
they will know what you mean. Jesus wanted the donkey because it was part of God's plan for him. Your king will come to you riding on a donkey, God's word said. The disciples went and did what Jesus asked them to do. They found the donkey and brought it to him. They put their coats on it for Jesus to use as a saddle. Jesus got on and headed for Jerusalem. His disciples followed. As they got near the city, people came up to greet Jesus. Soon there was a big crowd. People took off their coats and laid them down, making a path for the donkey. They spread palm branches on the ground too. They cheered loudly, Hosanna to our king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The whole city was buzzing with talk. People kept asking, who is this? Others would answer, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Many people did not know what to think about Jesus, but they felt sure that something important would happen soon. Dirty feet. Jesus had been with his disciples for a long time, but he knew that he would not be with them much longer. He wanted them to know that he really loved them. So Jesus got a towel and bowl. He filled the bowl with water. Then he began to wash his disciples' dusty and dirty feet. His disciples could hardly believe their eyes. When it was Peter's turn, Peter stopped him. No, Lord, said Peter. You shouldn't do this. Only servants wash other people's feet. Jesus said, If you really want to be my disciples, you must let me do this. Peter obeyed. Jesus washed Peter's feet. Then he washed everyone else's feet too. When Jesus was done, he sat down to teach them. You call me master, and that is right. But I also help you and serve you. That is what I want you to do for each other, Jesus said. Do not think you are better than others. Instead, serve and help. Now you understand what I have done. If you do the same thing, God will bless you. That concludes. There's our scriptures to the Last Supper next time. All right, let's let's conclude by praying uh, to our guardian angels. All right, that they protect us. Guardian angel, uh, angel of God prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard and rule and guide. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.